So you just graduated college with a computer science degree, and you're about to start your brand new software engineering job. Congratulations. I'm here to give you three tips on what to do during your first 30 days as a new grad software engineer that'll make sure you hit the ground running. I want you guys to become better engineers. I want you guys to get promoted earlier, and I want everything in your career to go extremely well. Welcome back to Tommy Codes. My name is Tommy. I've been a software engineer for over five years now. I've worked at tech companies. I've worked at high frequency trading companies, and most recently an AI fintech startup. And I'm here today to share my experience about what it's like to be a new grad engineer and what you need to do to stand out and overall just be successful. Let's get right into it. First of all, as a new grad engineer, the expectations for you are very different than if you join at the senior level or if you've been working at the company for a while. There's a few advantages that you actually have, mainly the amount of time you'll be given to do tasks. In all the tips I'm about to give you, I'm trying to highlight how important it is to invest in yourself and think more long-term. You don't wanna necessarily just be doing tickets as fast as possible. You don't necessarily need to be cranking out code as fast as possible right when you start, but you do need to be putting yourself in a position where a year from now, six months from now, you're gonna be 10X, 100X more effective than you are today. And that's mainly what these tips are about. Tip number one, get your dev environment set up and comfortable ASAP. This needs to be the first thing that you do. So I remember being in college, I actually did not usually code in an IDE, in an integrated development environment. I would code in gedit on Linux. And if, if you even know that program, leave a comment down below. It's very, honestly bad. Or I would code in Vim or something just on the command line. These programs are great. But when you're a professional, you're probably gonna be working in an IDE, an integrated development environment. For most people, that's gonna be either IntelliJ, VS Code, Cursor. To be honest, it really doesn't matter which of these IDEs you use. You could argue all day about which one is better. I personally prefer JetBrains. But what is important is that you take the time and become a master at your tool. You're gonna be spending eight hours plus a day doing software development, and the majority of those hours, you're gonna have your IDE open. So it makes sense to actually get comfortable in there. And what do I mean by get comfortable? What do I mean by learn and set up your environment? Well, you need to be, first of all, learning the shortcuts. So literally going on the websites, reading the official documentation and practicing the shortcuts, even if they seem like they're a little silly. So even opening up certain panels, you know, editing text, jumping to definitions, going to implementations, all of these basic functionalities you need to have just burn into your brain. You don't wanna be thinking about any of this stuff. This is gonna make it much easier to get into a flow state and if you start early, especially right when you become a new grad engineer, you're gonna have this ability for the rest of your career. And I can't tell you how many senior devs I've worked with that frankly just suck at using their IDE. And it really does hinder your productivity. It's not all about your technical skills. A lot of it is how good you are just using the tools. Really, really important to get that right early and to make that a priority from the get-go. If you've ever been an intern, you definitely know how painful it is to get the code even running in the first place. You're all excited to implement your first feature. You're gonna center a div or whatever silly task they gave you. And you spend the first eight hours literally just getting the code to compile or run or do anything at all. This is a very common experience. Do not get discouraged, but just pay attention to what you're doing and try to understand the process as much as possible. Try to dig deeper if at all possible. Don't be afraid to reach out to other senior developers and explicitly ask them to go over their setups with you. Most people are happy to share information and will be happy to go over their setup and they'll give you a lot of tips and tricks for how to get the code running. The other benefit of working with senior developers and having them go over their setup is they'll make you aware of shortcuts and workflows that you don't even know about. And learning this stuff early, again, you can use it for your entire career, extremely valuable. The goal with your IDE is to make it so that if you have an intern in the future, they think you're an absolute wizard with the technology and they think that you just think in IntelliJ. That's where you wanna be. That's gonna make you really, really effective. Tip number two, dive deep into the core technologies of your team. What do I mean by this? You're gonna join a team. Maybe you're doing backend web development and maybe the database that your team is using is Postgres. So most of your backend is just grabbing data out of Postgres, putting data into Postgres, running analytical queries on Postgres, whatever it is. And the backend code mainly is interacting with that database. Because you're using this technology, in this case Postgres, all the time, because it's such a core part of what your team is gonna be doing, it's actually worth spending the time to become an expert in the technology. What do I mean by this? You should actually sit down and read through the documentation. You should understand the basic concepts of the technology. And once you have just a basic grip of things, again, sit down and ask a senior developer and go over the questions that you have. Have them explain their understanding of the technology. Have them actually tell you why you use certain features and why you don't. 
any information you can get here is going to pay off because if you're using the technology every single day and you don't understand it and you're actually fighting with it if you're fighting with the technology instead of having it work for you you're just going to be really really slow and the sooner you can identify these core pieces of technology and the sooner you can start becoming competent in them the more effective you're going to be the job is really not only about writing code a lot of what you're doing is integrating different pieces if you don't have good understandings of these other pieces it's going to be really really hard some other common technologies that your team might be working with, and again, this depends heavily on what you're doing, what the company is doing, could be Amazon S3, it could be Kafka, it could be Redis, it could be any number of different things. Take the ones that your team is using a lot and sit down and make it your job to become an expert. I mentioned the official documentation. There's also, for bigger technologies like Postgres or databases in general, there's often very good books you can find. I made a video a while back about three books that you should read as a junior developer, and that goes over some of this stuff, but it depends on the technology. In terms of finding good books, for bigger technologies, you can usually find really good recommendations, and you should obviously just go with those. For smaller technologies or for more niche things, you might actually have to just roll the dice and buy a book that doesn't have that many reviews. And let me warn you, it's going to happen that you're gonna buy a book and it's not gonna be good. You have to be okay with that outcome. If you're unwilling to spend $20 because you're afraid of what's gonna happen if the book isn't good or not, if you're afraid that that's gonna be a waste of money, that's such a bad mindset to have. A good book will pay for itself a thousand times over. And so it's fine if you have to read through a few bad books and just toss them out. That's not a big deal. And also, if you work at a bigger company or even smaller companies, if you mention books and you mention that you wanna learn things and, and read on the side, often they'll actually pay for this stuff. So this won't even be an out-of-pocket thing. You can just ask and say, hey, I wanna read this book. It's because we're working on this technology and I don't know if it's good or not. Can you guys foot the bill? And honestly, they probably will. They'll be glad you even took the initiative in the first place. And of course, YouTube videos. I make some of my own. I've gone over PyCharm. I've gone over some other technologies. And there's plenty of other people out there that put out amazing tutorials and deep dives. Definitely be going over this stuff. When should you actually be learning this stuff? When should you be taking the time to understand these technologies? I'm gonna argue, do it on the clock. Do it at work. And don't ask permission to do this. Don't mention in stand-up that you're gonna need a point or two of your sprint going over the Postgres documentation or reading some book about Amazon S3. Just do it. No one's gonna care, believe me. And you're only gonna create problems if you try to ask permission. This is something you should just do. This is gonna pay dividends. And again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, because you're brand new, the expectations for your output are honestly not very high. Your main priority at the beginning anyway is just to become effective as fast as possible. And it's a far better use of your time to read through a book that has a ton of knowledge in it than it is to just try to crank out tickets as fast as possible with AI or by whatever means necessary. The work that you're doing as a new grad in your first 30 days doesn't really matter. It's not gonna be anything that groundbreaking. What matters is that you become that person who can take on bigger projects as soon as possible. So focus on learning, focus on getting better. Don't worry too much about working on the tickets. And again, in the first 30 days, you'll have way more time allotted per task. So you might as well use that time reading and upskilling yourself. You will not regret this. And again, don't be afraid to reach out to senior developers, especially once you have a targeted list of questions. People love to feel smart and asking somebody what they think of a technology and for you to explain stuff is a surefire way to make them feel extremely smart in their mind. And as long as you've done a little bit of research and can ask questions that prove you've read through some of the basics, they'll be happy to spend literally hours with you. So don't be shy. A lot of these people are less busy than you think. So don't worry about asking. And if they say no, they say no, no harm. They'll be glad you even took the initiative in the first place. Tip number three is become an owner ASAP. What do I mean by owner of the company? No, 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 that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about owning some piece of code, becoming the expert in a piece of code. If you ever done internships, or if you ever worked on a software product before, you probably noticed that for particular areas of a software project, whether that be a piece of technology, whether that be a part of the code, whether that be the build system, something like that, there are people at the company or organization who are just the guy. They're the person you go to when your build doesn't work. They're the person you go to when you have an issue with the database and they are just the expert. These types of people are extremely valuable to companies and you wanna become a person like that as soon as possible. Now, obviously this is easier said than done. And if you're a new grad, you're probably not gonna become the expert at the biggest piece of technology. But what you'll find is at any company of any size, there are things that are just broken or that don't work well. and people just kind of don't care about. So what does this look like? Often that's build systems, often that's automated tests, maybe some kind of deployment automation. It's kind of these little pieces of the developer pipeline. And there's, I guarantee you, if you look hard enough, you will find a piece 
of software, a piece of technology that nobody cares for, that nobody loves, and is just wasting people's time. This is a great place to go and just decide, hey, I'm gonna own this. I'm gonna be the expert. Just go ahead and plant your flag. There are several benefits of doing this. First of all, it's gonna show your team that you actually care. And there's a lot of smart people, don't get me wrong. Being smart in software engineering, you're gonna run into a million people that are extremely smart. Running into people that actually care is a very different story. The vast majority of people do not actually care. When I say be an owner, by the way, that means be responsible for that component or that part of the code or that technology and be responsible for it being awesome, for everything being smooth, for it being easy to use, for pain points to be taken care of. Now, you might not have the skills to do this right out of the gate. Like you can't just necessarily become an owner without any help, but you can talk to your manager about this and you can show a lot of initiative. And even just doing that, that will make people very happy with you. And it is something that most engineers are not going out of the way to do for whatever reason, whether it's just they don't care, whether it's they're too shy. If you take the initiative and say, hey, our build pipeline is really slow and I want to take the time to make it faster. And I researched this and I figured out that maybe we could do this. What are your thoughts, senior developer? They're going to be thrilled that you actually took the time to do that, especially for older companies. There's pieces of their systems that have been broken or barely usable for years at a time. And even if it's a tiny piece, even if it's only a small corner of a piece of the code, if you are the expert in something, then people are gonna start coming to you with questions and you are gonna be in a position of being extremely valuable. So you wanna get there as fast as possible and doing that really just takes initiative. You will be able to figure stuff out. You will be able to learn things on the fly. And as long as you believe in yourself, as long as you're confident that with enough time, that with enough effort, you'll be able to learn anything, which is something you absolutely should believe, then it's fine to take that initiative early, even before you have that. And especially if you're talking to your manager and you're letting them know that this is something you wanna do, Believe me, they're gonna be happy and that's gonna matter a lot more than just the number of tickets you're doing in your first week. There's plenty more I could say about how to be successful as a software engineer, especially when you're a new grad, but I wanted to share you guys these three tips today. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. And if you're not a new grad, let me know in the comments what other tips you would add for how to be successful in the first 30 days at a new company. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Tommy Codes.